So Adobe just recently released their new Photoshop update with integrated AI and it's really insane what it can do. I will show you what new AI features there are and how they work as well as some tips and tricks along the way on how to best use them and also what weaknesses the AI has and where it can improve. So let's jump right into it. Before we can start you have to use the new beta version of Photoshop. It would be version 24.6. If you already have Photoshop, it's easy. You can just go into the creative cloud, go to beta apps right down here, and then look for Photoshop and just install it. If you don't have Photoshop, of course, Photoshop costs something, but there is a free seven day trial version of it. So you can just get that, just install it and open it and we can get right into it. Okay, let's start with trying to expand this image. So what I will do is using this crop tool right here and just expanding it a bit. Of course, nothing will happen. But now if we just use the normal mask tool and mask over this area, and I would recommend just masking a little bit over the original image. And now this window pops up. You just click on generative fill and generate. You don't even have to put anything in here. And it takes a few seconds and it will immediately give us three different versions. In this case, all of them look really good. So you can just choose whichever one you like. If none of these version looks good for you, you can just click generate again and it will automatically generate another three versions. Now this was pretty easy to generate, but now let's try the other side. Here we got this temple, so it might be a little bit harder. We do it again. We just mask this area, overlap it a bit over the original image, click generative fill and generate. And we again got three really great looking versions. And you can see these are even different styles, so you can choose from them. Some of of them here might not look as good because there's a tree in here but look at how this perfectly overlaps with the original image and if you don't like one of these you can just click generate again and it will generate you a new image and if you like one of them just click here if you want to go back and choose another version you can always just go he right here on the image and it will show you right here all the versions um, you already generated and you can of course just generate another one now let's look at another feature which is really great um let us say for example you want to have a kayak right here you just get the lasso tool make a small mask right here wherever you want it to have also it should be roughly as big as you want it to have you click generate a fill and now you can just type something right here i will type kayak and it will give us three different results and look at how photoshop perfectly does these reflections in the water and smoothly brings it in here it really looks great. Of course, if you zoom in, you can see that the persons aren't looking perfect. This is something the AI always struggles with. But in general, this really looks great. And of course, you have three different versions, so you can also pick uh, one of the others. And this is really insane how it perfectly matches the lighting of the scene and the shadows. And of course, if we have an image like that, we can always just, um, if we want to expand it to this side, you can always just go like this, create another mask right here, generate a fill generate and we again got three different versions which all look really great so this is really insane how well photoshop can match these images now let's try another one um let's say for example we want to place a car right about here we just roughly ma mask it out click generate let's type in old car for example and click generate and just within a few seconds we get three really great looking cars and look how well they are matching their surroundings of course, they're not perfect, but look at the reflection, for example, in the wet road here. It knows that the road is wet, it mirrors the reflection perfectly here, and it clearly knows how to match the highlights within the reflection of the car and the shadows. It's really impressive how this is looking. What we can also do with this AI is, for example, just roughly mask out this person and then just click generate and it will automatically recognize this person and remove it from the image. And look at that, we get three different results and all of them look really, really good. It doesn't really look like there was anybody in front of it and it gets the lighting, the blur, everything really, really nice. Another thing we can do is roughly mask out this person again, but just the outfit of it. It really doesn't have to be perfect. And then click generate to fill and type in man wearing a hoodie and joggers, for example, and click generate and look at what the AI comes up with. Here we can already see some of the weaknesses of it. You can see the hands really don't work in any of these images. And you will notice that that's a really common thing that hands most of the time don't work. Here it conveniently hides the hands. So that's a plus point, but that's definitely one of the downside this AI currently at the beta version can't do hands at all. And if we go back to this image, for example, if we zoom in right here, 
you can clearly see a drop in resolution right here. That's because the AI is limited to a certain amount of resolution. That's something you have to deal with right now. Of course, if you zoom out, out it's barely noticeable, but still, it's a downside. You can fix it a bit by generating smaller areas at once. That should give you a little bit higher resolution, but it won't be perfect. And another thing I noticed when we go back to our car right here, if you try more complex prompts or um, also some details right here, I, for example, tried to make the headlights glow and specifically said that the car should point towards the camera. It just either ignores your prompt. So you can see none of these um, headlights are on and it kind of gives you worse results than the others. So I figured just giving it more general prompts like car or at most old car is better and then just let the AI figure it out by themselves and maybe just click generate a few more times rather than putting in a more specific prompt. Maybe they're going to fix it in the future. I don't know. But for now, it seems like more general prompts give you better results. Yeah, that's it with the new AI features you can now use in the Photoshop beta. I hope I could give you some valuable information. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching. See you next time.